We're going to go ahead and get short, get going shortly today. This is the second of three WIFTA certified bouts. The first one took place earlier today about 9.30. We had Fort Wayne's versus Rosie earlier. This is going to be a round robin later tonight. Fort Wayne will be taking on the Flatliners. Each other very soon. Bleeding Heartland having played Rosie just last month in Bloomington. And Bleeding Heartland will be playing the Fort Wayne Bomb Squad down in Bloomington in just two weeks. So these teams are going to be very familiar with each other when all is said and done. We're getting ready to start here off the jammer line for Bleeding Heartland. It's going to be number 27, Tear to Bits. Tear to bits, inside, outside, up to the front of the pack, cuts between a couple of blockers. Still trying to find daylight up at the front, finally is through, and your lead jammer is Tear to bits! Sailor Scary, surrounded by a sea of white jerseys. Sailor Scary, take, knocked to the outside, having to re-enter from the back, not gaining position illegally. Meanwhile, tear to bits around the outside, back to the inside, forced to cut the track a little bit towards turn one. Circles back around to re-enter from the rear and is back in the hunt. And out in front after a first scoring pass, that's five points, a grand slam for tear to bits, number 27. She came through with the Cinco sampler there. Sailor Scary still trying to get out of the front of the pack on her initial pass. That means that the Grand Slam point once again on the table for Tara DeBitz as she comes around and picks up another five points. Kibbles, to, kibbles and bits and Tara DeBitz. Tara DeBitz and bits and bits. And Tara calls off the jam. That's going to be our first jam. Ran about a minute and a half off the clock right there. Four points picked up on that last pass. I haven't thirded since last year at this thing. Pack is released, a no-pack situation called by the referees. The jammers are released, and the jammer for Bleeding Heartland, number 17, Kaká Caliente, starts to fight her way to the front of the pack, but takes a spill. Looks like the lead jammer this time is going to be Hertz Donut. Hertz Donut. She struggled a lot earlier today against Fort Wayne, trying to get through. But right now, she's had a great opportunity. The last time these two teams faced off, Rosie had a struggle trying to get lead jammer. That caused them a lot of problems during the game. It's good to see Hertz Donut picking up lead jammer status in just the second jam of the game. That looks like that's four points for Hertz Donut. Hertz Donut getting Rosie on the board very early on in this bout. It's key for them. We got the Virgin Cherry, number 81, up for Rosie in the blue. For the Bleeding Heartland, it's number 44, Knuckles Sammy, the rookie. Really been impressive this season. Rosie takes a knee, so does Bleeding Heartland, forces the no pack, jammers are released. And out in front for lead jammer is Knuckles Sammy. Knuckles Sammy came right off that jammer line. Sprint took advantage of that very slow moving pack in order to gain, got through and got the lead jammer status. And Knuckle Sammy threw the pack once, hits it, quits it, gets four points. Another thing for Rosie, Rosie's gonna have to watch, they're gonna have to watch their majors. They're already shorthanded, they have nine skaters on their team. So they have to be very careful to 
beware the majors, beware, because too many, you know, too many, you rack up seven, you're out of the game. We got Sailor Scary, number 7734 in the blue for Rosie on the jammer line. That's right, penalties and perhaps lineup rotation is going to be a major factor for Rosie in this game. This is a heck of a job for the bench coach, Sprinkles, having to juggle so few bodies. Ooh, Sailor Scary goes down on the straightaway. That's right, they gathered up on the outside edge of the track in the straightaway, and it allows Tara DeBitz to cut through the middle, which sort of turned into the inside, and she's out in front for lead jammer status. Tara DeBitz having a great opportunity there when Sailor Scary went down on the straightaway. Wallop a daisy being sent to the penalty box. And Sailor Scary, after that spill, was quickly up and out of the pack, forcing Tara DeBitz to call off the jam. Rosie's going to start this bout. One skater down. Hurts Donut, number zero. Scored the first four points for Rosie in this one. There, She's going to be on the jammer line again. Up against Kaká Caliente, number 17, for the Bleeding Heartland. Five minutes gone by so far in this period. Score reads, Bleeding Heartland 20, Roller Girls of Southern Indiana 4. And Kaká Caliente with the self-assist on uh -huh, Hurricane coming out of the front of the pack, and she's your lead jammer. On her initial pass, it seemed like the only, the only resistance she met against was Sandwich, number 31 for Rosie, but that, that didn't take very long. That last line of defense, and she wrote right through it. That's right, Hertz Donut able to get around Jalapeno Grill up towards the front of the pack. And she's going to have a little opportunity here as Kaká Caliente, the jammer for Bleeding Heartland, sent out to the box on a major. It's a great opportunity for Hertz Donut to get Rosie back on the board early on in this. The early going is so important for Rosie. They've fallen behind very deep early, and it's hard to recover from that. The longer they can hang in there, the better. And the better for their spirits that won't flag later on during the bout. Well, not only is there a power jam situation going on right now, there's also a blocking advantage, 4-3, to three for the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana. Hertz... At Hertz Donut with a grand slam, five-point scoring pass. Nice start, really, here for the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana. They've actually already doubled the amount of points they scored in their last bout against the Bleeding Heartland a month ago. That was a very difficult bout for Rosie going up against Bleeding Heartland. A very difficult bout that uh, basically was a war of attrition. It certainly was. It was kind of... Uh, ugly to watch. We uh, we love all the Indiana Roller Derby teams, especially Bleeding Heartland is really good friends with the Rosie League. Hertz Donut, though, picking up another Grand Slam as she goes through the pack that last scoring pass. Hertz Donut. Hertz Donut accounting for all of Rosie's points so far. Off to a pretty good start. One so far, 14 to 20. Just eight minutes into this bout. If you're watching it on DNN, Roller Girls of Southern Indiana, Rosie in the blue. Bleeding Heartland Flatliners in the white. On the jammer line for Rosie, we have number 81, the Virgin Cherry. 10-point unanswered jam that last time around by Hertz Donut. This time around, we've got Knuckle Sammy once again coming off the jammer line for the Flatliners. Knuckle Sammy versus Virgin Cherry, number 81. Virgin Cherry, very good on Sundays, even better on Saturdays. And your lead jammer coming out in front of the pack, Knuckles Sammy for the Bleeding Heartland. And the Virgin Cherry getting a little push from O Snap, number 50 there in the middle of the pack. O Snap pushing around Virgin Cherry like she does her husband. Happy anniversary. The Virgin Cherry finally out of the pack, hot on her quads is Knuckle Sammy, who just picked up another four points on that last pass. 
So that'll stretch it back out to a 10-point margin. Bleeding Heartland 24, Rosie 14 with 20 minutes or so remaining in this period. Already going a lot better for Rosie so far. The what? I keep forgetting. He always does that. No pack situation to start off from the pivot line. The jammers are released, but a track cut, I believe, called on Tara to bit. She's sent to the box for a minute. And in the meantime, the jammer for the roller goals of Southern Indiana, Sailor Scary gets a big whip from O Snap right before turn three, and Sailor Scary is out in front. Sailor Scary looking to help bridge that 10 point gap early on here in the first period. Once again, the opportunity is there with a power jam situation and a blocking advantage. Ooh, just skating on the outside. A lot of daylight on the inside of the track right there, and Sailor Scary is through for the Grand Slam. Five points picked up right there by Sailor Scary. Cuts the deficit down to just four in the middle of this jam. Rosie racking up the Grand Slam so far early on. And Sailor Scary calling that one off just as soon as all skaters were on the track. Don't forget tonight, Fort Wayne Derby Girls Spring Roll Official Party Headquarters will be at break and run. Free admission with your Spring Roll wristband or ticket stub, there will be derby drink specials and DJ Timmy mixing derby dance music for the dance floor, as well as free pool, cornhole, darts, beer pong, air hockey, and ping pong. Check them out at 1555 Goshen Road in the Gateway Plaza. She named herself after the soccer star, Kaka, uh -huh. so it's not pronounced Kaka. Uh -huh. A lot of people do it anyway. Yeah. Slow start for the pack coming off the pivot line. That pack stretched like Armstrong. And Hertz Donut forced to the outside by number 2009, Killer Kindness. Allows a little bit of time for Kaká Caliente to emerge from the front, and she's going to be your lead jammer. Well, we got some jammer on jammer action there. Referee signaling no pack. Bobby McGuillotine sent to the box for an out-of-play major for the Bleeding Heartland. And no points scored on that pass by either team as Kaká Caliente calls off the jam. Running around. Oh, go ahead. Running around screen printing, take your skater swag to Running Around located in Vendor Alley. They will add names and numbers to shirts and such as such. And as this jam is whistled into play, Sailor Scary takes off from behind the jammers and is called for the intentional illegal procedure sent to the box. Picking up her fourth minor. And once again, Knuckle Sammy emerges from the pack. Bleeding Heartland blockers trying to slow the action down just a bit, allow Knuckle Sammy to catch up. She does. Calls off the jam after getting through one time. That's going to be a four point pass for Knuckle Sammy. And four more on the board for the Flatliners. Almost halfway through this first period of play during this bout. Still a tight one within 10 points. 
A very nice start by the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana, skating short with only nine skaters. Hertz Donut taking advantage of the slow pack, becoming the lead jammer. Both jammers group tightly together. Tara DeBitz got out in front of Hertz Donut just a bit, so Hertz calls it off. Going to be a scoreless jam that time around. That was a practically a dead heat there. Hertz Donut got the lead jam, but she wasn't able to take advantage of it as she had the opposing jammer right by her, neck and neck. Check out Wicked Skatewear at www.wickedskatewear.com. All your derby clothing and accessories, also official dealer of Antic Skates. For Rosie on the jammer line, we have number 81, the Virgin Cherry. Again, a slow start to the pack. The Bleeding Heartland Flatliners crawling off the line and creating a nice wall in front, allowing Kaká Caliente to get around and out in front. She's going to lead it. What happens when Caliente meets Cherry? Sweet and spicy. Out of play, major there for Killer Kindness, engaging the other jammer way out in front of the pack. Couple of points picked up there on that one by the Flatliners. We're seeing, a, we're seeing a different Rosie team than we did earlier today. This one's even more sleep deprived. It has even less to lose. A little crazier, <laughs> a little wilder, a little more wild eyed, a little more reckless, and a little more official timeout. Thank you to Derby News Network for all the live coverage of all your spring roll bouts. Remember to check out www.derbynewsnetwork.com for all of your derby needs across the country. It's our, it's our friend Big Paparazzi from Detroit representing, representing D-Town. It's, it's so cold in the D. How the heck are we supposed to keep peace? It's all on a jammer's mind. You ever heard that one? It's so, it's so cold in the D? Not till now. Oh, it's about Detroit. I had to change some of the words. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's cold. It's cold in the D. Just starting to warm up. Dizzy Divine. It's bean bags. The bean bag toss. Cornhole. Who would have thought? Men's roller derby in cornhole. Two more things that Ocho Cinco is going to try during the lockout. As long as those two things aren't grouped together, I'm fine with it. I don't know. A Hoosier? It's an Indiana resident. <laughs> it's an Indiana resident. On the jammer line, we got Knuckle Sammy for the Flatliners against Rosie's Sailor Scary. If you get a chance at the after party, talk to Sailor Scary about her upcoming line of fanny packs. <laughs> no joke. Knuckle Sammy quick off the line and through the pack. She's going to grab lead. She moved through like Grease Lightning. Opened up a lot of room on the, on the inside and towards the middle. She was able to use it. She's got a, quite a small frame and is able to squeeze through small holes. You could stick a lot of her in an elevator. A, quite a lot of her. You can only stick about six or seven of me, though. But it just takes all kinds to make a world. Don't forget to pick up your official Men's Roller Derby Association t-shirt, stickers, and buttons at the Murda 
MRDA merch booth behind track one. This time, Tear to Bits and Hertz Donut. Donut's going to be your lead jammer, but she's tied up towards the rear of the pack. Tear to Bits made it out, and therefore Hertz calls it off. No score. Good strategic move there by Hertz Donut. After she got knocked to the outside, having to re enter in the back of the pack, she had that position. Good thing she had the jammer status so she could call it off. She's going to start again there on the jammer line. We got about, we got less than 12 minutes to go in the first period. So far, a low scoring game, 32 to 19 in favor of the, heart, of the Bleeding Heartland Flatliners. I, want, I keep wanting to call you Flatlanders, but those are Illinois people, Flatlanders. Absolutely. And as you said, um, there was some quick scoring early on in this game that's really tapered off, so it's come to a crawl. A lot more conservative play happening out there on the track. And both jammers out at almost the same time. Hertz Donut going to get lead on this one. And as she is passed by Kaká Caliente, calls the jam off. One more scoreless jam. Be sure to stop by the Race City Rebels booth in Vendor Alley to get your spring roll t-shirt or rally towel. Lots of fun stuff over at the Rebels this. booth. Hertz Donut keeps getting those, uh, she keeps getting the lead jammer stats, but she's not able to capitalize on them. She ends up in a lot of dead heats with the, other, with the opposing jammers for the flatliners. Well, that just goes to show how important lead jammer can be. If, they, if Rosie had not been able to claim lead jammer status in so many of those jams, we might have a very different score right now. Speaking of lead jammers, though, this time it's going to be Knuckle Sammy, the flatliner rookie. She's come around back in the pack. Virgin Cherry finally out of the pack for Rosie. And Knuckle Sammy came through on her scoring pass, picked up four points, immediately turned her head around to the other side of the track to see where Virgin Cherry was, calls off the jam before Virgin Cherry can arrive. Knuckle Sammy able to find a crease there in the wall there that, the, that Rosie built. Uh, she was like a Mongolian tearing down the city wall. I'm not going to do the accent. <laughs> it would be insensitive. Insensitive or hilarious? Little juking and jostling off the pivot line. And finally, everyone's across. The jammers are released. Tear to bits, number 27 for the Flatliners, and number 7734 seven, Sailor Scary for Rosie. Sandwich for Rosie in the penalty box. We've got one skater down a piece, one pack member a piece in the penalty box. Yep, that would be Uh Huh Hurricane, number 407 in the box, being joined currently by. Number 12, I believe that's Shifty McGee for the Flatliners. This next jam might be a good situation for Rosie. They'll have a one skater advantage right now, two members of the pack in the penalty box. Uh, you're right, sc scoring is coming in drips and drabs. A lot Please. of scoreless jams, a lot of two point and four point jams happening out there on the track. Really conservative play. These teams are just going to have to gouge them out where they can get them. They're going to have to, and you can see that Rosie, Rosie has not forgotten the last time that they faced Bleeding Heartland. You can see it tonight. Win or lose, they've come to play. Hertz Donut breaking through on the jammer line. She is the lead jammer. Kaká Caliente right on her quads, though. I prefer Ronaldo Salsa. or Wayne Rooney hot sauce. And Hertz Donut calls it right as she takes a left shoulder from Pele's Melee, number 808. Both of them got two, right? I think so. 
Yeah. Well. That hurts Donut getting two on that one. I think it just hurts got two. Cutting the lead to 17, 21 to 38. A little over seven minutes left in the first period. For those of you watching on DNN, if you've just joined us, we have Rosie, the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana versus the Bleeding Heartland Flatliners. Bleeding Heartland is in the white. Southern Indiana in the blue. On the jammer line for Rosie in the blue, number 81, the Virgin Cherry. We're seeing some tap dancing over there on the, on the pivot line. A lot of blue shirts up at the front of the pack for Rosie. But not enough on the outside to hold back Knuckles. Sammy once again gaining lead jammer status and quickly around the track as Virgin Cherry tied up in the pack but finally out. That Knuckles Sammy is incredibly elusive. A tiny frame. She could be a racehorse jockey for all I know. And once again, hitting it, quitting it, four points. And the flat, Flatliners go up 23 points, 44 to 21. Technically still in one jam territory, meaning that this could be evened up in the course of one jam, but certainly not at the rate that these teams have been scoring points so far today. Well, after, uh, I'll tell you what, after Hertz Donut, very early in the bout, had a double, had a double grand slam. It's been, as I said, drips and drabs. You take them where you can get them. She's had, she accounts, Hertz Donut so far accounts for 14 of Rosie's 21 points, and we are seeing a very slow walk. They are tiptoeing. It is some tiptoe action there on the pivot line. Sailor Scary doing some calisthenics, trying to stay loose before the jammers are released. She's doing her Oreo dance. That's what she told me it was. I don't know why Oreos. And Sailor Scary out in front along the inside line. Rosie's got lead jammer once again. The jammer for the Bleeding Heartland, number 27, Tara to Bits, finally making it out. And Sailor Scary is through and approaching Tara to Bits, but calls the jam off after picking up four. Sailor Scary coming through with four points. And right at the end of that jam, Doc Elliott bleed, I think, I believe picking up a fourth minor and being sent to the box for a minute. Well, if you're over in Vendor Alley and you're looking for something new to sport, check out Nick Clark Jewelry, the official jeweler for Fort Wayne Derby Girls. Also, they designed the spring roll and I think the fall brawl pendants. Nick Clark Jewelry, check them out over in Vendor Alley. Uh, we're seeing some maneuvering here. We're seeing a lot of slow moving packs at the very beginning. It may be slow, but very deliberate as it's all about trying to jockey into the proper position to spring your jammer and spring caca caliente, the Flatliners do. She's your lead jammer, now fighting through the pack on a scoring pass. Passes 921 up in the front, picks up four points, calls off the jam. Again, that's the story of the bout so far, except for one double, jam, dump, one double grand slam. It's all been four points, two points, one point here and there. Lots of zero points as well. A lot of, <laughs> yes, a lot of double knots, a lot of double knots. We're a... Jammers are released before the rest of the pack. They hit the back of it and everybody's grouped up right now. Yeah, we're seeing right now the slow packs, and then it's a race for the jammers to break through the slow packs. Nice work by Bobby McGuillotine and a couple other flatliner blockers up near the front of the pack, holding back the Virgin Cherry, allowing Knuckle Sammy some room. Once again, Knuckle Sammy, your lead jammer. Rosie's got a Rosie's got wallop of a, da wallop a daisy in the box. 
Down one skater. And Oh Snap takes a spill out of turn four. A little slow to get up. Oh Snap a bit ginger going back to the, going back to the bench. Didn't need any help, but uh, I'm sure she's going to feel that in the morning. We're getting down to the two-minute mark in this first period. This could very well be the last jam. It might not be, but it could be the last jam of the first period. 25 to 52 in favor of Bleeding Heartland. The very enthusiastic sailor, Scary, on the jammer line for Rosie. The pack split up right there, white on one side, blue on another, a no-pack situation called. And Sailor Scary sprints out in front for lead jammer status. Killing time for Rosie going to the bench, number H8. Not the bench, the penalty box, my mistake. It's sort of a penalty bench, if you will. It's the bench of shame. I, I see more bench than box over there, to be honest. So two points for the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana right there. And four, I believe, for Tara to bits of the Flatliners. And we're down under one minute to play. We are going to get one more jam in this game, it appears. Or in this period, rather. And once again, we'll have Kaká Caliente, number 17, for the Flatliners, taking off immediately from the jammer line after that double jammer whistle is blown. And right around the outside for lead jammer status on the last jam of the period. We are getting ready to hear a horn in about 20 seconds. We, we, we do want to caution, and we keep saying it, ignore the horn when it comes because that does not mean that the, the jam is over. That just means there is no more time on the official time clock. There will still be time on the jam clock. And now Wallop a Daisy, she was sent back. She was going to the penalty box, but she was sent back. We still have a minute 22, a minute. Oh, right, she called off the jam. And they just happened to call it off at the same time as the horn, and that's going to do it for this period. I believe they've already put those last points Taken by the Flatliners up on the board. We're going to end this period. Bleeding Heartland Roller Girls, Flatliners 60. The Roller Girls of Southern Indiana All-Stars 27. I actually, I actually think...
Will Rhoda Rage please come to the Fort Wayne Derby Girls merch table, please? Rhoda Rage to the Fort Wayne Derby Girls merch table. We want to take, a, we want to take some time and, and say, if you're a fan of what you see here, and I, and I imagine there isn't, there isn't anybody here who isn't, why don't you go over, to, go over there to Vendor Alley, take a left on Shakedown Street, but on Vendor Alley, and just support... You know, Shakedown Street, it's a Grateful Dead song. And, and go support some of these teams. Rosie's, Rosie, by the way, I want to I do a plug for my team. Rosie is selling uh, Rosie Blend coffee. Like, you can get a big brick of coffee, and it's really good coffee. If you like coffee, I know, it's, I know it's, this is no time of the day for coffee, but you're going to want one tomorrow morning. You're going to be here tomorrow morning, so you might as well get some Rosie coffee. Go over to the merch tent. Support, support these teams. All right, that's the end of our lengthy halftime period. For those of you, for those of you joining us on DerbyNewsNetwork.com, we have Bleeding Heartland high, uh, Flatliners. I almost called you Highlanders. Highlanders, Flatlanders, you're the Highlanders. I have I slept about two minutes last night. I apologize. <laughs> the Flatliners of from the Bleeding Heartland are leading the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana, 60 to 27. Southern Indiana is wearing the blue with the red with the red trunks, and Bleeding Heartland is wearing the white tops with the black bottoms. And don't forget the orange socks. Quickly off the line that time, Knuckle Sammy for the Bleeding Heartland Flatliners out in front once again for lead jammer. The Virgin Cherry at first tied up in the pack, cuts to the outside, finds herself behind a couple of Flatliner blockers in, I believe that's Kaká Caliente and was Bombshell Shock number 99 as well. Virgin Cherry once again forced outside by Kaká Caliente with the right shoulder. Epic yes. Brendemic indicating no pass, no penalty there on the outside. Got some really good blocking there. Really good blocking by the Flatliners. And a whip from O Snap sends Virgin Cherry out in front. Knuckle Sammy picks up the four points. Right on Virgin Cherry's tail, calls off the jam, hits it, quits it one more time. That's another four-point jam, Kentucky Prophet. Well, that, that's definitely, definitely some, it's, I mean, I think, hopefully it won't break open here. You know, we, I love to see a good close bout. There have been a lot of routes today, a lot of routes. Men's, women's, junior roller derby, we've seen a lot of, a lot of, a lot of routes. And, uh. We know it's exciting for you if we keep it close, but uh, they can only do what they can. Right now we got Sailor Scary, number 7734 for Rosie on the jammer line. And it looks like number 225, Bobby McGuillotine, jamming for the first time, I believe, for the Flatliners here in the second half. At the beginning of that jam, Hertz Donut picking up the intentional fourth minor behind the jammers to get sent to the penalty box. So a slight blocking advantage for the Flatliners, along with lead jammer status, and Bobby McGuillotine comes around for her scoring pass. But it's going to be called off. Sailors, no, no, but no points either side on that one. I mean, it's one of, another one of those where they where one one jammer gets the, the lead jammer status, and the other one is just right behind, and it's neck and neck. You can't do anything on that one. I mean, anything anything other than a wash. That's basically the best you can do. It's a defensive strategy. So no points on that one. Flatliners taking a knee at the very beginning there to start before the whistle. And they tighten up pack formation as they come around turn two. Both jammers initially having a hard time getting through the pack tear to bits, trying to find some room, is held back a little while by Samich, number 31, but finally gets lead jammer status and is out in front. Virgin Cherry flanked by some white jerseys. 
I got to say this for Rosie, they're doing a better job of getting into scoring position. That was a problem they had early on in the bout. And I mean, in the first bout they had early about 9.30 this morning, very difficult time. And then consequently, jammers would have to inevitably be blockers after the initial pass by the opposing, by the opposing jammer. That's right, the Rosie girls doing a lot better job of blocking in this game, really creating some holes to allow their jammers, if not to get lead jammer, at least to be right on the tail of whoever does. But right now we're seeing Bleeding Heartland has opened up 13, unscored, 13 unanswered points to start this second period. We're four minutes in, 73 to 27. Hertz Donut breaking through to become the lead jammer. Hertz Donut, I believe she scored about 14. She scored a little over half of Rosie's points thus far in the bout. <laughs> But once again, right on her tail, as she enters the pack, is Knuckle Sammy. But very smartly, Hertz Donut passes that rearmost couple of blockers, picks up a couple of points before calling off the jam. She's just trying to get what she can because she knew she had that jam. She knew she had the opposing jammer right behind her. So just trying to get in there, get a couple, get in and get out. Hit it and quit it. The timing was great. She did it just in time to not allow Knuckle Sammy to get up there at, toward the rear of the pack. And Official a, timeout. That's the thing. I, I notice when I step on you, I just end the syllable. No, 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 no. It's, I feel like it's me, too. It's mostly me. It's mostly me. Well, check out the merch booth in Vendor Alley for Sugar Moon. Sugar Moon designed the Fort Wayne Derby Girls League poster, which is available at the merch booth, Sugar Booth, in Vendor Alley. Thank you, Papa. Big Papa Razzi here, sitting in with us. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I appreciate the company. I appreciate you. Not quite five minutes gone by so far in this second period of play in this contest. Grand total of 15 points cumulatively scored by both teams in this half. Bleeding Heartland still with a 44 point lead over the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana. This time it's Kaká Caliente out in front with lead jammer status. The pack tightly formed coming around turn four. Everyone jockeying for position. Roller Girls of Southern Indiana once again with a one skater blocking advantage. And that's one of the things that got Rosie in trouble a lot in the early bout, not being able to make an initial pass and getting lapped a lot of grand slams from Fort Wayne's bomb squad early in the first bout, in the first whiff to sanction bout, and the jam is called off. That's right. I don't know that we've had a grand slam since the first five minutes of this contest. I don't think we have. I think, I think after Hertz Donuts double, that was it. That was the last one. And speaking of Hertz Donuts, she's back on the line. Virgin Cherry lined up to take the intentional fourth. Virgin Cherry taking a seat in the penalty box on the bench of shame. And before the jammers are released, bombshell shock number 99 for the Flatliners coming out of the box, rejoining the pack. And Bobby McGuillotine slices to the outside and gains lead jammer status right before killing time, knocks her to the ground. She gets right back up on her skates, takes a nice whip from a teammate and is out in front once again. And she went ahead and called the jam off. I don't really know why. I have no idea. I 
Don't forget, Sunday night's after-party location, Rum Runners, located inside the sponsor hotel, the Marriott. And if you want to come out and hang out tonight, check out the Marriott, book a room at the Marriott, don't drink and drive, because the shuttle will take you to and from the after party all night long. Mention Fort Wayne Derby Girls when booking your room and receive a discount rate. And as we return to the track, it's Knuckle Sammy. Once again, circling around, trying to start a scoring pass. She's picked up lead jammer for what feels like about the 12th time, I think, in this game so far. I saw, I saw Scary take a, take a heck of a hit there from Thigh Candy, number two for the Flatliners. That Thigh Candy, she knows how to put a bruise on somebody, I can tell. That's right, she's in her second season skating with the Flatliners, or at least with the Bleeding Heartland Roller Girls League, and has become a very good blocker for this squad. Flatliners having some really good defense, holding Rosie to two points so far, and we're about nine, we're about eight and a half minutes into the second period, only two points scored by Rosie in this period. And the scoring has stayed at a pretty mild clip so far in this second half, just as it did for most of the first half. A grand total of not quite uh, 20 points scored in this half so far, and we're almost halfway through it. Yeah. Saw a little bit of jammer, a little bit of jammer on jammer action out of the, off the line. Number 27, Tara, Tara DeBitz, breaking through, becoming the lead jammer. Skaters tightly grouped toward the front of the pack, but allowed a little daylight on the inside, and Tara DeBitz is through for a five-point grand slam, the first one that we've seen since early on in this contest. Rosie just trying to hold on right now. You can see right now, we're getting into, we're getting into the, the throws of this second period, the second period of the second bout for Rosie. Like I said, an undermanned team, nine skaters on the team, and this is their second bout of the day. I believe there was four added to that grand slam there by Tara DeBitz. And Wallop the Daisy is gonna start this next jam in the penalty box. She's been there quite a few times. She's, she might be signing a lease agreement soon. And that jam by Tara DeBitz, easily the highest scoring jam that we've had since that 10 to nothing unanswered jam by Hertz Donut early on, about five minutes in. Timeout charge to the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana. Well, while you're out there checking out the convenience stands, check out PBR. It is the official beer of the Fort Wayne Derby Girls. Drink specials at the after ball party. All right. And I actually had a list of those. Pretty, pretty interesting, actually. Of course, Fort Wayne Derby Girls have the cup special. Buy a Fort Wayne Derby Girls souvenir cup for $5, and your first draft beer is free. After that, it's $1.50 to refill your souvenir cup. Other spring roll specials include $3 mixed drinks and the $5 spring roll drink special, a.k.a. Long Island iced tea. So after the timeout, the Roller Girls of Southern Indiana putting Hertz Donut on the line up against Knuckle Sammy. Quick start by the Jammers to start that jam off, and Knuckle Sammy's out in front for lead jammer status. Hertz Donut knocked to the floor between turns three and four, still towards the rear of the pack, facing a lot of white shirts up at the front. Hertz Donut taking a tumble out of that turn. She's getting knocked around quite a lot. 
And that allowed Knuckle Sammy to pick up a five-point grand slam. And looking for more on her next pass and slices through without being touched whatsoever. Picks up another five, does Knuckle Sammy. Hertz Donut collecting a lot of lumps. Finally getting it through out of the as out of the zone of engagement, being allowed to pass through. And Knuckle Sammy once again begins to call the jam off as she passes by. Oh snap! Finishes the pass, picks up the point, gets another four. So I believe that's another nine-point unanswered jam for the Flatliners as they begin to stretch out their lead. And we're looking at 102 to 29 at the moment. A grand total of 73 points is the margin. I think at this point you're starting to see that the tiredness really set in for these sleep-deprived Evansville dwellers. Ooh, both, both jammers. Ooh, both jammers not to the outside, but Virgin Cherry breaking through to become the lead jammer. Beautiful move there by the Virgin Cherry, delivering the left shoulder to Bobby McGuillotine in the middle of the pack. Spins her around. While Bobby McGuillotine was busy being spun around, Virgin Cherry sped ahead and got lead jammer status. Very nice move. A great opportunity for Virgin Cherry to help get Rosie back on the board. And she, I think she got four on that one and decided to call off the jam. Three, three, my mistake, three. Three by the Virgin Cherry. We've got an official timeout on the floor. The referee's talking something over with bench manager Lord Satan of the Flatliners. For those of you that don't know, Vendor Alley is located at the end of track one. Tons of different products to check out. Keep checking back throughout the day as vendors come and yeah, go. Vendor Alley is only open on Saturday. <laughs> so buy your merch today. Why should you buy it today and why does Saturday only matter? Because your tickets are good for both today and tomorrow. So come back tomorrow on Sunday for more Derby action right here at Spring Roll. Referees having a bit of a conference right now. Perhaps talking about all the drink specials at the after party tonight. They have to take advantage of them. A referee's salary is quite small. I don't know if you know this. I would say even below poverty level. It's almost as bad as an announcer's salary. It's close. Pretty close. Looks like after that zebra conference, they're going to alter the amount of points scored on that last jam. It was two points for Rosie, not three. Virgin Cherry with a two-point scoring pass there on her last one. Referee still conferencing. Right now, for those of you checking in on DNN, Fleeting Heartland Flatliners 102, Rosie All-Stars 31, Rosie in the blue, Flatliners in the white. This is track one, 2011 spring roll, and we got a whistle from the referee. I think we're gonna get, we're gonna get action started up here again very Yay. soon. This time we're going to have Uh Huh Hurricane number 407 coming off the jammer line for the first time for the Flatliners. Uh 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Hurricane versus Hertz Donut. Hertz Donut has seen a lot of jammer action today in general, both bouts. And she goes through, she breaks through, she becomes the lead jammer. Hertz Donut looking to put some points on the board for the Rosie All Stars to Wanda. That's the motto to Wanda. I don't know what it means. I looked it up online, still didn't make head or tail out of it. So, uh huh, Hurricane finally out of the pack. Obviously, not lead jammer. That was claimed a long time ago by Hertz Donut. But she gets through and calls it off after picking up her four points. Hertz Donut hit and quit it. Four points. Helping to get Rosie on the board here. Well, Rosie. You're doing a lot better than you did in the first game. I gotta give you that. I love, I love my fighting nine. <laughs> I adore thee. Slow start off the pivot line. Jammers are released. Virgin Cherry, once again, Going up against Bobby McGuillotine, number 225 for the Flatliners. Bobby McGuillotine along the inside, followed closely by Virgin Cherry. However, McGuillotine out in front for lead jammer as the Virgin Cherry put a foot outside and had to stop and turn around. Oh, they have to let Virgin Cherry go. They're way too far ahead of the pack. Up until then, that defense is tight like a Chinese finger trap. I'm sorry, Asian finger trap. <coughs> Bobby McGuillotine picking up four points on her first pass, making about half of another lap before calling off the jam. And we've got 15 minutes remaining in the contest. The teams line up this time. Pele's Melee, I believe, coming off the jammer line for the Flatliners. And Sailor Scary, number 7734 for Rosie. Not the only 7734 I've seen at the spring roll on this very day. I saw another 7734. Got to read it upside down. Sailor Scary having a heck of a time against those flatliner yeah. defensive. And Pele's melee, assisted possibly by the Hawaiian volcano goddess herself, out in front for lead jammer status. Sailor Scary practically on an island until she got a hand from Wallapa Daisy. She was pretty much stuck back there between four white jerseys, and she was stuck. Ooh, taking a hit from number two there. That's Thigh Candy. Thigh Candy, that's a, that's a flying head scissor you don't want any part of. Sounds like we've got some exciting action going on in the other track. I heard a swell of audience response over there. Sounds like we've got maybe a game tightening up over there on the men's side. Well, for all you know, Chris Angel could be over there, just show up and do some tricks. He's a mind freak. <laughs> He's a freak, all right. Hurts Donut breaking through to become the lead jammer. Hertz Donut going to take this opportunity. She's got more than half of the points for Rosie so far, and she's looking to, to add to that. I believe Molly Slamham is going to the penalty box where she will join Wallop Daisy. Number 921, Molly Slamham in the penalty box. Right now, the Flatliners have a one-skater advantage on the track. 
Number 27, Tara to Bits, trying to hold back Hertz Donut, knocks her down coming out of turn three. And Bobby McGuillotine able to reach the rear of the pack and tie that jam up. That's going to be a three to three jam, I believe. Hertz Donut was getting a lot of signals from the bench, didn't hear them, didn't notice them, trying to get back on her rails there. They were, they were doing the motions, but uh, it cost them there. And it was basically a wash, basically a wash, a 3-3. Three, three. Back again with Virgin Cherry, number 81 for Rosie on the jammer line. And quickly out in front once again is Knuckle Sammy, number 44. Blocking core for the Flatliners right now. Bad Mudda Trucker, number 96, along with Assassin Matrix, 86. Thigh Candy sent to the penalty box, took out a referee on the way. Her milkshake brought that ref to the yard. Two more points picked up there by Knuckle Sammy before calling it off. And although we started to pick up the pace of scoring there for just a couple of jams, we've trickled back down to two, three, and four point territory. Yeah, we've only seen a couple of, we've only seen a couple of grand slams. Uh, only a few, we, we only saw one in this half, well one or two this half, one or two in the previous half, but right now, Bleeding Heartland having a, doing a better job, doing a better job of getting the uh, of getting those drips and drabs. And again, we've got a very slow molasses pack here. Jammers anticipating. Well, not only have we not seen very many grand slams, we've not seen very many multiple scoring pass jams. Not a lot of them, but when they do happen, they happen to the Bleeding Heartland taking advantage of those opportunities. Sailor Scary breaking through to become the lead jammer. A great opportunity for Sailor Scary. She's also contributed to the scoring. She, I'd say she's the second leading scorer behind Hertz Donut for Rosie. Shifty McGee, number 12, the jammer this time for the Flatliners, kind of stuck towards the rear of the pack. Looking for a little help from teammates. but doesn't get any before that one's called off. One point for Rosie. Rosie only able to get one on that one. We're down to less than 10 minutes left in the second period. Bleeding Heartland winning 114 to 39. But I'll tell you this, Rosie showing up a lot more game for this one than they were last month. Uh, you were there, I was not there. I was not there to witness uh, what was, a, again, a very a very tenacious bout that had to be called due to injury. It was. It turned out uh, to be rather unfortunate for the Rosie skaters losing a couple of skaters to major injuries during that bout. The safe thing to do, of course, was to just stop right there and call the game as it was. But here on a neutral playing surface, not on either of the team's home track, um, Rosie able to do a lot better job even though they're quite shorthanded. Well, Rosie's a lot like Rocky. He's, she's going to go the distance. Hertz Donut breaking through to become the lead jammer. And she calls that one off immediately because she was already out of position. The opposing jammer was already broke through, broke through on a minor penalty and was in scoring position. So as soon as Hertz Donut got the chance, she had to break through and call off that jam to stem the bleeding. One point picked up by the Flatliners on that. Good call by Hertz Donut. Part of the problem when you have nine skaters, when you have nine skaters, you have to go with a very limited jammer rotation. We've seen Hertz Donut, the Virgin Cherry, and Sailor Scary. Right now again, we have the Virgin Cherry again, number 81. Well, if those are the only jammers you have and you're trying to keep them fresh, you don't want to play them as blockers very often. That leaves you six blockers. So only one person sitting out per jam. That's got to take a toll after 60 minutes of roller derby. Well, they'll have played 120 by the end of this bout. <laughs> and uh, I am looking, I'm looking forward actually to tonight's bout between Fort Wayne Bomb Squad and the Bleeding Heartland. But uh,
We're still seeing some rough and ready action there. And after a few spills in the middle of the pack, Kaká Caliente straight through the middle out in front for lead jammer status, now followed by the Virgin Cherry, number 81. Again, this is a telltale thing. We're seeing Rosie getting into scoring position a lot easier than we did earlier in this bout, earlier in the day. Calling that one off with a four-point pass there for Bleeding Heartland, pushing it to 119. We have an 80-point game with six and a half minutes left in the second period. And those four, those four points were pure adrenaline right there for Kaká Caliente. Just sprinting right ahead, that was all running, not even really skating along the outside straightaway. And quickly, before even hitting turn two, Knuckle Sammy in front, lead jammer status once more. The Flatliner blocking core, shock and bombshell shock up at the front along with Jalapeno Grill. As well as Assassinatrix in the center of the pack, having to let Sailor Scary go. And another quick pickup of four by Knuckle Sammy. She called that one off before Sailor Scary could take advantage of the situation. We're getting down to five minutes left in the bout. Five minutes, 123 to 39. For those of you watching on DNN all over the world, we hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Hope you're having, I hope, I hope there isn't a large disconnect between the audio and the video. I've seen that happen before, but they do the best they can. Rosie taking a knee to start the jam. Hurts Donut in there, banging against the flatliners. And once again, Bobby McGuillotine through the middle and around the outside for lead jammer status. Right behind her, though, is Hurts Donut. In general, we've seen both teams do a pretty good job of keeping out of the penalty box with a few exceptions of a few skaters on either side. I think almost half of the times we've seen girls in the penalty box, it's because of picking up the intentional fourth minor to get their time out of the way so they can get right back in. Makes a lot of sense now. And now Hertz Donut is alone on the track. She's the own jammer. She's not... That'd be a grand slam for Hertz Donut that time through. Good going, Donut. Have a Danish, Donut. You deserve it. A cinnamon roll, even. Hey, you know what? A cinnamon twist. Make it a whole bag. A whole bag of cinnamon twists for Hertz Donut. I got it. Carb up, honey. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with Hertz Donut this season. Watching her for the last three years really played for the Rosie squad. Came, you know, came across as a very good blocker her first couple of years, but has really emerged as a fantastic jammer for this team. She is small, she is fast. Uh, she's able to do some really good juke moves. She is, she is really good and I mean, she obviously has come into her own and she's providing a lifeline today as a jammer for Rosie providing more than half the points. Another, gr another grand slam there. Trying to get through for perhaps Ooh. one more, if possible. Oh, However, the jam ends, the two minutes is over. Before she can get all the way through, only four points on that last pass. 14 points by Hertz Donut on that jam. I gotta give a shout out to number 31, Sandwich. That's a beautiful whip there, right before the end of the jam. Sandwich giving a great whip to Hertz Donut. These blockers are not getting a whole lot of rest either. The jammers aren't getting rest, neither are the blockers. And we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Less than two and a half minutes to go. Coach Fitz for Rosie talking to the referee here. And we have a timeout. Two and a half minutes left. 123 to 53 in favor of the Flatliners. I don't know if that was a charge timeout or an official timeout.
I think it's 14. Uh, we got a slow, we got a slow molasses pack. Rosie taking a knee. Yeah, this is more like tar, I think, than molasses. It's not quite moving as quickly as molasses. Rosie taking a knee like they're going to get a speech from Newt Rockney. Rosie wants to win this one for the Gipper. And Tara DeBitz managing to stay inside the boundaries on that one. She's going to be right behind the Virgin Cherry, who is the lead jammer on this, probably our penultimate jam of the contest. Virgin Cherry having to call it. No points on either side. And that has been a common theme in this bout. Uh, a lot of double knots, but, some, but somehow bleeding heart. Bleeding Heartland able to gouge out a few more points on key jams than Rosie. Can, can I ask you a question? The last time these teams met, last, In last April. month, what was the score before they had to call it? When it was called with 21 minutes remaining in the period, it was 184 to 5. 184 to 5. And now this today, that was last month, this month, right now with a minute... A minute and change. It's a 70 point lead, 123 to 53. A decisive victory so far for Bleeding Heartland. But Rosie's still fighting, still in it. Right now, we got one blocker apiece in the penalty box on the bench of shame. And we're going to have at least one more jam. We have a timeout for those of you watching at home. 41 seconds left in this bout. The second of three with the sanctioned bouts at Spring Roll 2011. The score, Bleeding Heartland Flatliners 127, Rosie All-Stars 53. Right now we have one, jam one blocker apiece in the penalty box. That timeout called by Lord Satan, the bench manager of the F Bleeding Heartland Flatliners, just trying to settle on how they're going to finish this contest out. So after this discussion, we'll be lining up for what is likely to be the ultimate jam of this game. We're going to have Hertz Donut, the big time scorer for Rosie, up against Knuckle Sammy of the Flatliner squad. I got to say, both of these jammers have put on a great show today. Knuckle Sammy has done so great. Such a small, elusive character, as is Hertz Donut, but I think Knuckle Sammy is a, just a a bit skinnier and Hertz Donut breaking through to become the lead jammer. We're gonna shoot the moon on this one, folks. Again, we got that horn that's gonna be coming up in about 20 seconds. A common theme, ignore the horn because there's about 15 seconds difference between the jam clock and the game clock. Knuckle Sammy knocked to the inside of the track towards the rear. 
That jam was called off right before the horn. So that's going to do it. We're just waiting for a final score right here. And I believe that's going to be it. 129 to 55, I believe, is your unofficial final. Bleeding Heartland taking the victory and awaiting a date with the Fort Wayne Bomb Squad later on tonight after the only men's game on this track of the day featuring the New York Shock Exchange and the Puget Sound Outcasts.